Yo, JD on the mic with Marvino. We in the house. Dad nah. boy Pew. <laughs> right here with you, baby Steve. Greatest sleep of all time, sleeping bag Sid. And we got the Kung Fu Jedi boss man Jansen on the wheels of steels. We're going to talk about the anniversary of the 100 point game with Wilt Chamberlain for a few <clears throat> minutes for you. Our boy Marvino got a little story on that for you. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, what, 50 years yesterday? I think so. March 2nd. Right. 50 years yesterday, Will Chamberlain scored 100 points in the game. It's still history in the making. <clears throat> okay, was, okay. He was 26 years old when he uh, did that, when he was playing for, uh, what was it, Philadelphia? I think yeah, that was, I think I think was that 25 was years old. <clears throat> no, it says Chamberlain was 26 years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And uh, they was playing against the New York Knicks. Mm-hmm. You know, right, what I'm I saying? got a question. It was I got held it. at the Hershey Sports Arena, right. in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, right, well, shout out to Will. You know, I got a question for you. Do y'all think anybody will ever score a hundred points again? That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Too. I, now I, the defense I, is much tougher nowadays than it was back then. Well, you got Kobe with eighty. I actually yeah. think LeBron, uh, Pete Rose, James. Will end up scoring a one hundred points in a game before he retires. Uh, I really, I really believe that. Um, you gonna, you gonna put your money on that, huh? Will not be putting <clears throat> any money on that. Okay, but uh, I just believe some, so for some reason, I think LeBron, before his career is over, is going to put up a hundred points. It's going to be against some kind of sorry depleted team, but. I think no, nah, I don't. Well. I don't. Yeah, well, it nah. said uh, Will Chamberlain was uh, one of thirty-seven black ballers at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I actually watched that documentary last night. At, actually, and uh, it's amazing because at the end of that game, the, they were playing the New York Knicks, and the New York Knicks actually tried to stall the basketball. That was back in the time mm. where you know they didn't have really a shot clock. Have the shot clock, yeah. so they could just hold the ball. <clears throat> So they tried to hold the ball, but what um, the, what what Philadelphia did, uh, the team that Wilt Chamberlain was playing for, is they fouled. They right. fouled the guys that had the ball, so they had to go to the free throw line so they they could get the ball back. And it's amazing, man. And they did that. And at the end, I think Wilt had like ninety eight points with like a minute and mm-hmm. one second to go on the clock. And uh, they were on the offensive end, <clears throat> and they threw the ball down to Wilt. He shot it, and he missed it. But they got the ball back. He threw it, threw it to him again. He shot it, and he missed it. Mm. And then uh, they actually got the rebound again. Mm. Right. And this white guy, I can't remember his name, was wide open, like, at the top of the key. And he had a decision to make. <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, do I shoot this wide open shot and get my two points, which would be, you know, the only two points in the game for me? Right. Or do I throw it down to Wilt and decide to make history, you know, with this 100 points? So he threw it down to Wilt. Wilt got the ball. I think he ended up dunking it. Yeah, he was known as a slam dunker. <clears throat> yeah. he, he had one of the uh, the the whitest nicknames at that time, too. What was it? Snowflake? No, nah, they called him <laughs> <laughs> They called him <laughs> Dipper Dunk. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what they called it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Dipper Dunk. <laughs> You know, some white commentator came up with that. Say, LeBron, <laughs> LeBron dunked the other day on the Utah Jazz, and the commentators uh, said he had a yabba dabba dunk. <laughs> oh lord, that was funny as hell. <laughs> but, Do you uh, remember who it was? I don't remember who that yeah. was. Oh, but, okay, but it was interesting, man. Uh, Wilt scored the hundred points at the end of the game. He he actually um, lived in New York, so he actually rolled back home. With with a couple of the the New York players, yeah, <laughs> that he scored a hundred points on. So it's just a, it's just an amazing time uh, back in the day, man, and how how Wilt was able to do that. One of the teams that played on the night that Wilt scored the one hundred points were the uh, Philadelphia Seventy Sixers. The Philadelphia Seventy <clears throat> Sixers, I think they played uh, two nights ago, so is when mm-hmm. he when he scored the one hundred points. They had not scored 100 points in a game in 19 games in a row. Oh, that's terrible. But on that night of Wilt's anniversary, guess mm-hmm. what? Mm-mm. They scored 105 points. That's tight. <laughs> so did they get something? like the, uh, the free tacos or the free Big Mac? Actually got a free Big Mac. 
Ooh, that's mm-hmm. a good deal right there. That's yeah, a, well, a lot, a lot of your haters a... free two piece dart. <clears throat> nah, Sweater that Big pepper. Mac going hard, man. Yeah, man, the Big Mac is nasty as hell. What? <laughs> man, please. Oh man, man I don't Big give Mac a damn. Is going hard. Big Mac is nasty. <laughs> 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 that nasty ass sauce hey, why, they put on there. No, this man. time next year, people will be on the Big Mac. It, no, man, I've never been a Big Mac. I think I'm for the Big Mac, man. The Big Mac is going hard. That McDonald's brainwashing. No, no. Yeah. yeah, well, we grew up on it. Right, so. right. I didn't grow up on no Big Mac. Oh, here we go. With the I had, no, I was the quarter pounder man. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you only get one meat on a quarter pounder. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same size as both of them little bitty meats on that Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> you got all that damn bread? Come on, man. That's why you choke the shit out yourself. <laughs> you got all that damn bread. Now you got the secret sauce, man. man it, leave see, it up. Leave they it never up. let out what the secret is, man. You don't know <laughs> what that is. It's Thousand Island dressing. I don't, I don't like <laughs> Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> So, so you were so hard have, about that. So what you rather have ranch on your burger, huh? No, no I don't uh, like ranch uh, neither. Uh, I don't like ranch neither. Put mustard on mine. So uh <clears throat> so the conspiracy man over here is right. he goes with the uh with, with the quarter pounder instead of the, the big man. Uh, uh, so, that ain't a conspiracy, yeah. it's called but, personal but he, preference. But he would get it, <laughs> but he will get a damn uh <laughs> what is it, a double cheeseburger or something. <laughs> or a cheeseburger. Them the nastiest damn burger. Now, I don't eat the cheese. So high by conspiracy yeah, yeah. is because I just prefer a it's quarter like, pound over a big It's like one. they just got them burgers out the train. <laughs> 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 yeah, them cheeseburgers will kill you. Yeah, yeah. Them little burgers. <laughs> Grease burgers. Grease burgers. Yeah. Man, it tastes better than nasty ass. I told you. Back, you. <laughs> he be eating them down. Nasty ass. That's damn. a heart attack. That's right a solid, that solid sauce, man. Mess around and slide down your throat and choke <laughs> no. shit out you, man. Yo, man. Shit. So, with <laughs> getting back to Wilt, man. <laughs> yeah. We got oh, all yeah, yeah. Big, yeah. big Mac talk right there. <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain, who was the Big Mac of the NBA yeah, back, yeah, back yeah. in the day, okay? It has to uh, to spark a debate, man, as to who is the greatest basketball player of all time. Nah, it is no choice. No, it don't spark a debate. Nah. Well, you ask a lot of half of the old schools. I say a good 70% of the old schools out there, they still say Wilt Chamberlain. Well, they lived that time, so you can't argue with <clears> Right, right. You know, they lived the time, so it'll be yeah. hard to knock it. Just like it's going to be Michael Jordan for us. Yeah. And, you know, I'm 15, have to, 20 years from now, people going to be looking at us crazy. I go with Michael Jordan for two, oh, re- yeah. for two reasons. The, the number one reason I go with Michael Jordan is because throughout the history of the game, it's been proven that you have to have a top 10 big man in order mm-hmm. to win a championship in the NBA. No mm-hmm. team in the NBA besides the Chicago Bulls have ever won a championship without a top 10 big man. The Bulls, have, with Michael Jordan, is the only team that's been able to do it. They did it six times. And three of those times, the first three times they did it, Jordan only had one other Hall of Fame on the team, with him, which was Scottie Scotty Pippen. Pippen. Who was not a top ten big man? He was, he was just a, a you know, another um, Hall of Famer. So that's the number one reason I regard Michael Jordan as being the best player, the greatest player of all times. The number two reason I put him over Will Chamberlain is because Will played in a time where they did not allow many black people on the team. Okay, you know, <clears throat> it, if you look at all those teams back in the day, it was just two or three black men right. on the basketball team. And those guys weren't even scorers. They were just the dirty men doing the dirty work, getting the rebound, and passing it to the white guys. Right. So, you know, I don't think Wilt got the opportunity <clears throat> to play with the absolute greatest players, you know, in the game because they wouldn't let, you know, they wouldn't let black people play. So, Wilt most definitely is, is great, man. If you go back and watch that documentary about the 100 points, they go through a lot of his history on Wilt Chamberlain and this guy's numbers, man. Hey, I think he averaged 50 points and 27 rebounds one year. I think he averaged like 50 uh, women a night. Oh, yeah, and yeah. 50 women a night. Yeah. yeah. They say he, they say he 10,000 strong, boy. Uh, 20,000. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Man, you cheating them out of 10,000 right there. Hey, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Will had twenty thousand women. Yeah, right they there. they just said. Uh, I just read it right there. He told a chick one night, 
that he was with that he had ten thousand. Yeah. He was dropping her off at the crack of dawn. <laughs> and he he told her that's what he told him. Well, I've been with ten thousand women. Yeah, that was just a halfway point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wilt was at halftime at that point. <laughs> the game must go on. Yeah, man. He actually <clears throat> led the league in assists one year. I think one game he had uh like fifty five, it was either forty five or fifty five rebounds, man. They and said one, the night <clears throat> he told that chick that it was in the crack of dawn and he still had a game that day. Went and played <clears throat> the game. Yeah. That boy showing up. Yeah. The game that land pipe and land up. The game that he <laughs> scored a, a hundred points, and he only had like one one hour of sleep that whole day. So, <laughs> so he played the game off of no rest whatsoever. So Still scored hundred points. A, is that a tribute to how good he is, or how sorry everybody else was? Well, I think <clears> it's sorry what everybody else know? was. I think it's a, some give and take right there. He right. he was he was without a shadow of a doubt great. I would still put Wilt probably in the top five of greatest oh, players yeah. of all times, but. He did play with subpar competition, and that's because, of course, the white man didn't allow all of the races to to get in the NBA and right. play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's my little <clears throat> Wilt Chamberlain history for you, man. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Tiger Woods, man. Mm-mm. I mean, Tiger Woods, uh, they had a reporter ask him a question this past weekend about the book. Yeah, I saw that. That yeah. ha- that uh, the guy Haney, his uh his his caddy had wrote, you know, against his will. He wrote like a I guess kind of a tell all book about uh Tiger Woods and he was talking about how Tiger Woods always wished that he was he was uh with the Navy SEAL. The Navy SEAL, yeah. Because his dad was a was a Marine and you know, he loved the army and stuff like that. So he said he trained, he had like this sort of a Navy SEAL type of training that he did. And he said he was so obsessed with the Navy SEALs, like he told Haney one day he would go and and get like a, 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 a <clears throat> some type of, of an exemption and go and be with the Navy SEALs, like in the middle of his golf career. <laughs> so a reporter asked him about that and Tiger was like, I don't want to talk about that because I've, I've already talked about Tiger it. Tiger looked like he was getting mad as hell, Man, too. Tiger was <laughs> getting mad as hell. Yeah, he you, think, seen it. you can see the little one vein just <laughs> halfway protruding yeah. out his forehead like right. he was ready to go off on this yeah. guy. And he kept it as tame as he possibly could, but it's a debate going around on that, man. Who's Do you think the reporter was in the wrong for asking him that question? Well, or, I do, think, or do you think Tiger was in the wrong for not just going on ahead and answering the question? Well, I think it was the reporter's fault. But at the same time, t- Tiger is a target now. They're right? they going to try to make him mad. <clears throat> yeah. they, it's like, you know, he's a target, you know. They born to ruffle his feathers and stuff now, you know. That's Every chance it. they get. Yeah, that's just he, they, else to they, report, you know, right? It's yeah. else, everybody knows he's not, he's not the same tiger as before, so yeah. you know, pick at that. Hey man, I, don't, I, I put it on the reporter too, you know. Uh, man, what's I about to say? If you see the dude getting mad, just let it go, because you never yeah. know that that could have been the black side come out of tiger. He could have got him slapped shit out of him, <laughs> but, you know or, what I'm or shot him. <laughs> but if you let tiger, oh, tell it, if you let tiger tell it, he ain't got no black side. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. yeah, he just don't know you. Ooh. 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 Have you ever heard him say that he's black? Ooh, boy, you know. Yeah, that, that's nah. what his wife said too. But anyway, ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> pew. Nah, come cool. on. Well, yeah. my whole thing about the thing is, Tiger said that he's already answered, you know, questions about the book. He says he's answered everything that he's gonna answer about what this guy wrote in the book. Tiger said, along with his lawyer, you know, they put out a statement that they felt that some things were exasperated in the book. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, that, that's what they said, okay? Now, obviously, you're not going to stop your golf career where you're making millions of dollars to go out here and be a Navy SEAL. But it's not yeah. like he needed the millions of dollars. He already made a lot of money yeah, before but, it got yeah, to that point. But at the same time, it, 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 at the same time, it is kind of ridiculous. To think that a man mm. would just cut off what he's got going on with his golf career, being the first black man to dominate golf, to all of a sudden go off and be a Navy SEAL. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why he said he thought a little bit of what this guy was saying mm. in the book was exasperated. Okay. And so so he told the reporter, look, I've already answered, 
you know that question basically i've already answered questions about the book and the guy just kept going on with it you know what i'm saying okay but i got a question for you i'm gonna come at you from a different angle would you not quit your current job to do what you always wanted to do if you had enough money you don't need you're not hurting for money would you quit your current job to do what you always wanted to do not if my current job was but what he, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but see, you gotta look at it from his perspective but what he's always wanted to do is play golf no that's probably what he was just naturally gifted at and made money doing it probably felt pressure to do it appease the people but like he said he wanted to be in the military because that's what his dad was was a military man he was not running in combat he boots may, in the street for nothing. he may have wanted to <clears throat> you know be in the army like his dad but i think he also had a dream to be a, a great golfer I, I believe that, man, and, and he's shown that, and he's told us, you know, at, as such that hey, you know, he could, I love he could, being he could the tell golfer. You, he could tell you that. Just he like, loves being the Michael Jordan of golf. He well, loves. He's that. not anymore, but I'm just saying, if you make enough money, you're gonna quit what you're doing to do what you've always wanted to do. Yeah. Ask but, Ricky Williams. But I, I, th- I think if 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 anything, <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> it, it, if he really has this dream of being a Navy SEAL, I think it has to be equal to golf because he loves the hell out of golf man how do you know well, I, I because mean because he's told us he's told us that just because he don't get on there you know i love the game of golf this and that whoop, whoop. okay if he loved the game of golf so much then why this guy was tell? on wasn't he on the uh what was it the tonight <clears throat> show playing golf at, at the like age of two? three <laughs> yeah three like three years old oh, oh, man. okay so think about, about it at the <laughs> age of three what three-year-old do you know i don't think he feels about it like i how think he, he was to. pressured into it now he was a phenom no doubt yeah. but because he was a phenom his dad boy you better get on that golf you know oh. what i'm saying i'm telling you like when you have a little boy or something boy you better get that football you better get that baseball you better get that basketball come on now I don't know about that, man. You take a child before he the probably, age of seven. You he probably, loved the, he he probably, loved, right. He loved he the game probably. so much because his dad loved it so yeah. much. Right. You could take you know a child saying? before that the age much. of seven. His exactly. dad's been gone, you know? Exactly. His dad loved the army, and but see, his dad real, also loved golf. You got to realize he's pretty much the one on all levels of golf, so that's not a challenge to him no more. He wants something that's gonna be a challenge. For real. And he that's was dominating golf so much. It's just like he went out there and all right, whatever. He wants something challenging. And tell me what's more challenging than trying to try out for the Navy SEAL. I don't. I I think it's <laughs> ludicrous that he would leave golf to, to be a Navy SEAL. It's just like you. You got a job, but you want to do something else because you don't like your job no more. Yeah, but again, this guy's getting ridiculous money to be a golfer. But you but not seeing it from his perspective. Got, he don't he need already, that money no more. But you don't. Money. I right, think he, he don't has. Need that money I, think, I think he has a genuine love for the game of golf. I well, mean, he's, now he he's, had he he's, had. I'm pretty sure he had love, a genuine love. No. But not no more. After like with the uh, with the uh, analyst asking him the crazy questions, and he don't like all that. It's shit. human no, nature. I, it's human nature. Once you accomplish a goal or achieve something, you strive for something else. I think he still has the love for golf. I think the only reason he's fell off is because of the stuff that went on with his wife but even by, God, by God. now even by now he if, if he did went through that situation he should have enough time to be in the got over that situation anyway. i don't know about yeah, that yeah, but the I stuff that because, happened with his wife was because of golf right it's because he's gone and he got to do this and that and he can do that and he can go here it's because of golf that's <clears> why <throat> what happened with his wife move around like that because they had kids I'm just saying, I'm looking at it from a different perspective, for real. Because if I had enough money, I would quit what I'm doing to do what I've always wanted to do. And that's just how you look at it. You can't even look at it like, from, you know, you wouldn't give up that much money, but Tiger's already got that much money. So, what right. I mean, what else What else well, do you need to make? I, mean, I, I think another reason, which may be also the main reason that he didn't want to answer that question is because this Haney guy is the guy that stabbed him in the back. Yep. This is the guy that went off and, hey, wrote a book about him. You know, when he thought they were tight, you know what I'm saying? Right. So he doesn't even want to acknowledge the book exists. You know, he don't want him making no money off the book or none of that. So why should he have to answer any questions about the book? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's that's the main thing. He ain't. Hey, what? <laughs> you stabbed me in the back by writing a, a damn tell-all book about me, dude. I don't even want to talk about you or the book. That's, so, why, you I know, put, that's why I put it on the reporter. Don't ask him the question. You already exactly. told him he didn't want to answer. Hey, quit asking. Go on about your business. Exactly, man. So at, at the end of the day, I, I think Tiger is the one that's in the right. If you don't want to answer questions about the book, so be it. Stop asking questions about the book. Yo, we're going to try to come back with the last segment for y'all. We're going to get into some controversial 
uh controversial to g or not to g i'm trying mm-hmm. to tell you this Uh-oh. is uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be a goodie it's gonna slightly, be a goodie slightly controversial for the christians right mm-hmm. there tonight and also some come on player after that yo thank y'all for listening babies up. dark side sports radio, radio. Who cares? Man, I hit rock bottom. I ain't killed a sheriff, but a man show shot him. With a slug from a plug, one, two, three, tune in. Of the soul, lyrical family reunion. Felt when it melted the felt from a slip mat. Saw your first cousin and I thought, yeah, I'm with that. Ain't got me buzzing on the page because I sniffed that. Permanent ink, the crowd think, dang, he ripped that. Rap that, had that, mad and sad that. He ain't never blown up despite the fact that. He got a lot of skill and a good work ethic. He rock a lot of ill flow till words never gonna pay for another fresh song. What the heck am I doing wrong? Am I not as good as I heard that I was from mom and dad? Maybe I really should have done some rap that I spent too much time missing. Maybe then the public would have taken a listen. Why the heck they telling me I'm great and I've been winning these battles since 98? But so what? In a clock, paper clip with a time card. Yeah, you got goals, but did you really try hard? Start a revolution, ain't got the answers, just solution. One plus one don't equal three. Minus the problem, you'll find it's me. Man, I'm here just to run a race. I got a cloud of witnesses that feel disgrace. So far, I'm dead last place. So far, I ain't seen his face. Probably cause I'm dead last place. Told his mercy and grace. So what? Twitching, I'd knock her out with brandy. You're just funny. 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 This is my Bushell, and you're listening to Dark Side Sports Radio. But I hear no sound Blind but I see when the sun go down The night life fast so I must slow down 45 RPM on this merry go round The turntable wobble but it don't fall down Everybody is an orphan in their own dark man I found me a new soul Life in a loophole Now I finally got a way to make the night useful Put down the spoon for what you been forced to Right into the heartbeat on what the inner voice said I can't take another mother loving disappointment So I'm large loving and I'm living the endorsement Broke my appointment with worldly enjoyment Try to get it fat up but add unemployment Could you please inform it that I can't afford it It's a good thing somebody else bought it He bought it
Yo, Yo Dark Side Sports Radio with JD, with your boy Marvino. With your boy Marvino, feeling good in the studio. Yeah. That boy Pew. Right here, baby. Greatest sleep of all time, <clears throat> sleeping bag safe. What's going on? What's going on? <clears throat> and Kung Fu Jedi boss man Jansen in the house on the wheels of steels. Yo, we got some very controversial 2G or not 2G for you tonight. Um, want y'all to call on in if you got any comments. 214-741-9111. Yo. To G or not to G? Here we go. Sleeping <clears throat> Bag Sid had brought to my attention last weekend. Okay. All right. That somebody was actually Facebooking in church. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was some Facebooking going on in church. Somebody, I guess, Facebooked that, you know, well, we got the Holy Ghost up in here and <clears throat> things is getting kind of kind of rowdy. We we having a good time. And I guess some some uh, girl had Facebooked back and was like, well, what are you doing Facebooking if you got the Holy Ghost in you? Right, right. You know, you do. <laughs> Who was that, Bishop Eddie Long? No, <laughs> no oh, it's no. right here in the Metroplex. Oh, uh, no. I already know Kurt Franklin. No, no. In the Metroplex. no. Mm. It was a uh, church down here in Oak Cliff, man. But they were TD Jakes. Mm-mm. No, no. T- t- uh, uh, sleeping bags. You want to tell them who it was? Ooh, Ricky Rush. Doing? Ricky Rush. <sighs> Ricky Rush. So apparently, uh, you know, so I guess Ricky R- Rush had told the congregation to go ahead and Facebook what's going on in here, you know, because we got the Holy Ghost and it's rocking in here. So that's when. <laughs> That's when sleeping bags started reading what mm. had what had actually happened. Do you got the? Do you still got the text? No, for what I'm looking happened? for it now. So okay, no, okay. If if you happen to find it, come on, you gotta have this stuff ready, sleeping at, bag. At, at any time, if you happen to find it, just go ahead and start reading it out. But the to G or not to G tonight is. Uh oh. Is it a picture? Oh, go ahead. Go is it okay? Is it okay to be Facebooking in the middle of church if the pastor tells you to do so? So, is it okay for a pastor to tell you to just get on Facebook and and tell how you feel at that moment while you're in church? Ah, uh, no, <laughs> I see the no, man. This is so amazing because when when when, when this question first came to me i had the same doggone look that y'all have dog it's like <laughs> dang i gotta i gotta sit back and think about this no nah, i don't think facebook and church are mixed no right? no not at all if the pastor told you to, even if the nah. pastor told you the pastor shouldn't even be telling you right. so yeah. if the pastor told you that tells you a lot about that pastor exactly yeah telling you know that hey for real yeah. and yeah. i'm right there with and you i was telling yeah. you that in the car you know what i'm saying no you wouldn't you no, all you <laughs> said all you said was would my pastor do that and would such and such pastor do that a lot of a lot of old school type pastors which i have an old school pastor but of course a lot of old school pastors would not even think to to do that because they probably don't even know what facebook is number one (laughs) (laughs) you know what i'm saying but you got a lot of these new age preachers that kind of try to do things in in a new way this was kind of tough for me to decipher so of course i had to go to my spiritual advisor and get some answers as to what they thought about it. And at the end of the day, what did Jerry Jones do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jerry Jones. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's who his spiritual yeah. advisor yeah, is. Really. Said, Jerry Jones, boy, you going to the top, boy. <laughs> yeah, <shut up. laughs> you going to the top over here, boy. Now, man, what I I had to come to the conclusion that it is I, I don't know if it's right or not, but I don't think you want to be doing that. No. Okay? no. Don't want to be trying to tell the congregation to Facebook somebody and tell them what's going on. That in you're having of, a Holy Ghost uh, yeah, time in church. In the middle of church. And that's because what me and my spiritual my spiritual advisor advised to me that uh, what it's doing in it is it, it's distracting you from church itself. You yeah, know you, what ain't supposed yeah, to be on your, yeah. you ain't supposed to be on your phone any damn way. Right. Exactly. Because if you're in church... Whether you got the Holy Ghost or not, and the place is rocking, and you know, and you pastor tell you to send <clears throat> send something off to Facebook. Well, what could happen? He's trying to get followers. Exactly. And yeah, try to well, make more money. That's all it is. You know, exactly. the church is about the bottom line. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some some people could could interpret it just like you said. You know, you may be trying to get more members. Yeah. But more importantly, you're dis, you're you're distracting. It's a distraction from church. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's a distraction <clears throat> as it is to sit there and try to get a 30 minute sermon and focus solely on on what the preacher's trying to tell you. You know, that's it's it's hard enough trying to do that. Well, then you know you're on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and, that and, music uh, you got going. I know it's a weird music <laughs> going on. This yeah. to G or not to G. Yeah, yeah, it's cool though. It's classical, man. Yeah, yeah, good. It is classical. But I mean, you know, it's like it's just kind of the it's just kind of distracting at the at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Because if you get on Facebook and you tell folk about what's going on, next thing you know, the person you're Facebooking or whatever, or somebody might send you a message back mm-hmm. then the preacher might say something and then oh you know you gotta you know now you're on facebook trying to talk to this other person you know what i'm saying yeah so you gotta message them back again then they messaging you back again and that's actually what happened and on that <clears throat> on this particular case yeah but i couldn't find it i couldn't find you it. done missed the whole sermon facebook <laughs> yeah, i know it yeah, for real. <laughs> he look up it's time to go in. right <laughs> <laughs> nah that, that's that's exactly what i think it is though he's trying to get more followers you know more people coming in more money coming i've in, always shook so, my head at that ricky rush especially yeah. when you see him on flavor tv and everything what is he doing on a rap uh what you call it tv trying tv to show. spread the word i guess in between breaks healing through hip-hop all right <laughs> man uh not a bad not a good sign man not a good sign i don't yeah. know about what i'm not i'm i am not i haven't what? i haven't seen a lot of <laughs> Wait, for real? i haven't seen a lot of ricky russ you know uh, sermons or uh, really heard him a lot you know for me to really give my opinion on the on a ricky russ but at the end of the 